Solving a second order differential equation can only be described as being completely loads of fun. We need to find a complementary function first and then a particular integral. We find the complementary function by solving the auxiliary quadratic which is given by the left hand side of the differential equation with the second derivative replaced with m squared and the first derivative replaced with m and then the y replaced with the number one. We solve the auxiliary quadratic and we get two roots. Now those two roots might be real and distinct. They might be two completely different real numbers or they might be complex numbers, um, alpha plus or minus i beta, complex conjugate roots, or the other option, m is a repeated root. Now each of those has a separate form of the complementary function. So the complementary function for real and distinct roots is y equals a e to the first one x plus b e to the second one x. If the roots are complex conjugates then the complementary function is e to the alpha x, alpha is the real bit of the root, and any amount you like of cos beta x plus any amount you like of sine beta x. They're actually the same thing, they just look different. I've done a separate video explaining that. If you have a repeated root, then you start with your a, e to the m, x, and then you can't have that again because you've just had it. So you introduce this x and that pulls the second part of the complementary function, the bit that makes it two-dimensional, it pulls it away from that first part and introducing this x is what we're going to do, multiplying by x is what we're going to do when we need a new solution, but we've already got the solution there, and the new one would just be the same as the old one, but we need a new one, so we multiply by x. Okay, the particular integral. What we do for the particular integral is we copy the shape of the right-hand side. So we look at the right-hand side, the f of x, and we copy its shape. If it's a quadratic, write down a quadratic. If it's a trigonometric, write down trigonometry. If it's exponential, write down exponential. Copy its shape. Y equals. Then differentiate. Differentiate again. And basically, given that your particular integral is something that you want to make f of x, you just force it. When you do this combination, force it to be f of x. And then it'll work. Let's try this one. We'll start with the complementary function. So we make the auxiliary quadratic m squared, that's a good start wasn't it, plus m squared minus 2m plus 5 equals 0 and then we try and solve it. I don't think that's going to factorise but if I complete the square minus 4 plus 5 equals 0, I'm going to get m minus 1 squared equals uh, minus 1. So m minus 1 is plus or minus i, so m is 1 plus or minus i. That's complex conjugate roots. So the complementary function is given by e to the real bit, which is 1, x, and then any amount of cos beta, that's the amount, how much imaginary, which is 1, so just x, and then b sine x. That's my complementary function. Right, let's work on my... A particular integral. Now the right hand side is a quadratic so I'm just going to write down a general quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c because I want to match up with that quadratic on the right hand side. That gives me 2ax plus b as my first derivative and my second derivative is going to be 2a. I'm going to put all of those into the left hand side of the equation and force it to equal 5x squared plus x. So second derivative 2a minus 2 lots of first derivative 2ax plus b plus 5 lots of original function ax squared plus bx plus c and I want that to equal 5x squared plus x and so it shall equal 5x squared plus x because I will make it equal 5x squared plus x and this is how I will make it equal 5x squared plus x. 5ax squared, that's how much x squared I've got, x, I've got minus 4a, how much other x have I got, plus 5b, that's how much x I've got, and numbers, I've got 2a, I've got minus 2b, and I've got plus 5c, and I want this to equal 5x squared plus 1x plus 0. So, what I need is the 5a to equal 5, I need the minus 4a plus 5b to equal 1, and I need the 2a minus 2b plus 5c to equal 0. Let's see if we can do it. 5a equals 5, I can do that in my head. 
uh, minus 4a plus 5b, well that would be minus 4 plus 5b and that needs to equal 1. So 5b equals 5, so b equals 1. Oh, this is nice. Okay, let's see what c needs to be. 2a minus 2b plus 5c equals 0. Uh, a is 1, b is 1, so 2a minus 2b is 0, so 5c is 0, so c is 0. So my particular integral is y equals 1x squared plus 1x plus nothing. And my general solution, here's my complementary function, here's my particular integral, and my general solution would be y equals e to the x, a cos x plus b sine x plus x squared plus x. And starting again with the complementary function, we make our auxiliary quadrat quadratic m squared. Now there's no first derivative, so no m. And then there's minus 2y, so minus 2 equals 0. Be careful if there's only two terms, whether you've got this one is 0 or this one is 0. People often make that mistake. So what we're actually solving here is m squared equals 2 with m is plus or minus root 2. Now these are real distinct roots, which means our complementary function is a e to the root 2 x plus b e to the root 2 x. Okay, now on to our particular integral. Our right hand side is a trig function, so we're going to copy it. Sine 2 x, but we don't know how many of them we need, and we know that we also are going to need some cos 2 x's, otherwise it's not going to work. So we definitely need some, some sine 2 x's and cos 2 x's. Let's differentiate. So we get 2 lambda sine 2 x minus 2 mu, not sine, it's hard. The derivative of sine isn't exactly sine, is it? No, it's cos. And then minus 2 mu sine 2x. And then the second derivative, d squared y by dx squared, will equal minus 4 lambda uh, sine 2x minus 4 mu cos 2x. I'm going to put them into the equation. We've got the second derivative, minus 4 lambda sine 2x minus 4 mu cos 2x minus 2 lots of the original function, lambda sine 2x plus mu cos 2x, and I need this to equal sine 2x. Let's tidy it up. How much sine 2x have I got? Minus 4 lambda, uh, minus 2 lambda, and how much cos minus 2 lambda? Oh yeah, that's right. And how much cos 2x have I got? Minus 4 mu, uh, minus 2 mu equals sine 2x. So I need this bit, minus 4 lambda minus 2 lambda to equal 1, so that I've got 1 sine 2x, and I need this bit here to equal 0, so that I've got no cos 2x's on the right. So uh, minus 6 lambda is 1, so lambda must be uh, minus 1 sixth, and minus 6 mu equals 0, so mu must equal 0. So going back to my particular integral, I have discovered that lambda equals minus a sixth, and that mu equals zero, so my particular integral is minus the sixth sine two x. And my complementary function was a e to the root two x plus b e to the root two x. So my general solution is y equals a e to the root two x plus b e. Oh, sorry about that. Look, forgot the minus on that part of the of the. Uh, Complementary function, that was bad of me. e to the minus root 2x plus, no, minus even, 1 sixth sine 2x. And there is our general solution. One more. Off we go with our auxiliary quadratic. m squared plus m minus 2 equals naught. And can we factorise this? I think we can. m plus 2 m minus 1 equals 0, and that gives us m is minus 2, and m is 1, and these are real distinct roots, so my complementary function will be a e to the minus 2 x plus b e to the x. Done. Right, now onto the particular integral. My right hand side is an amount of e to the x, so I don't know how many, but I know I want some e to the x's. That's the same shape as the right hand side when I differentiate. Oh, that wasn't exactly difficult. And I differentiate again, and that wasn't difficult either. And then I put them all into the equation, and I get lambda e to the x plus the first derivative, lambda e to the x, minus two lots of the original function, which is lambda e to the x. And I need this to equal 
e to the x. So how many have I got on the left hand side? Lambda, oh dear. Oh dear. Something bad's happened. I've got naught equals 6 e to the x. Oh dear. So where did this go wrong? I'll tell you where it went wrong. It went wrong here. This is where it went wrong. And you might be thinking, well, why? Because the right-hand side is an amount of e to the x. I thought we were meant to copy that. So copying an amount of e to the x is an amount of e to the x, and that's all fine. So what's going wrong? I mean, it seems to me like what we've got here, lambda e to the x, when you put it in to that left-hand side, when you put it in here, it produces zero. Well, that's a complementary function that does that, not a particular integral. A particular integral would equal this, so it's almost like I've found another complementary function, an amount of e to the x. Wait, let's look at my complementary function. Wait a minute. I already had an amount of e to the x in my complementary function. I haven't found a new bit of complementary function. I already had it there. If I'd thought for one second when I wrote this down and looked at my complementary function, I would have said, wait, this is not going to work. This guess is not going to work. I've already got that in my complementary function. I already know that it doesn't matter how many e to the x's I've got, it's going to produce zero when I stick it in the left-hand side because that's what the complementary function does. So that's not going to work as a guess. So what are we going to do? Not this. So we need something, don't we, that's kind of like... It's kind of like e to the x, because we know we need e to the x, because the right-hand side is e to the x. But I've already got e to the x, so I need to somehow kind of pull this away and produce a new e to the x that isn't e to the x, because I've already got e to the x, but I need some more, but I've already got it, and I need some more. And this is like the situation we have when the auxiliary quadratic comes out with equal roots. If the auxiliary quadratic comes out with m1 equals m2, they're both just called m, then we start building our complementary function and we say, well, that's a e to the m x plus. And then what we want to do is b e to the m x. But that's silly because that's just a plus b e to the m x, which is just basically a e to the m x because it's just an amount of e to the m x. And we need two. Our complementary function needs to be two dimensional. So do you remember what we did here? We did something to this one to pull it away from that one and make it different, but make it still about e to the m x. What we did was we multiplied it by x. So our second term of the complementary function was bx e to the mx. And then that all worked out. You can watch the video to prove that it does work as a complementary function. And we're going to use the same trick here. If your pi, this is really important, if the pi that you want, the particular integral that you would start with, that would normally work, if that's in the complementary function, then it's not going to work which means you need to multiply by x, okay? You need to pull it away from the complementary function. Right, let's go again. dy by dx equals, oh, now we need the product rule. So lambda x e to the x plus lambda e to the x. And then the second derivative is going to equal uh, lambda x e to the x plus lambda, I had to use the product rule twice, plus another lambda e to the x. And then if we stick all of these into the left-hand side, then we get second derivative, lambda x e to the x plus 2 lambda e to the x plus first derivative, lambda x e to the x plus lambda e to the x minus 2 of the original function, lambda x e to the x, and we want that to equal 6 e to the x. Now what have we got on the left? Well, we've got lambda x e to the x plus lambda x e to the x minus 2 lambda x e to the x. They're cancelling. That leaves us with 3 lambda e to the x, which we want to equal 6 e to the x. So 3 lambda equals 6. So lambda equals 2. So we found our particular integral. Our particular integral is y is 2x e to the x. And our general solution will be y equals a e to the minus 2x plus b e to the x plus 2x e to the x.